Hi everyone, welcome to lesson 2.4, Biomolecules Part 2. Recall in 2.3 we had our introduction to biomolecules, and in this lesson we will continue with how biomolecules are formed and their importance in overall bodily functions. Remember to fill in your guided notes and keep up with your vocabulary list as we go through this lesson. So living things must take in materials and energy to grow, develop, and reproduce. Metabolism is the combination of chemical reactions through which an organism builds up or breaks down materials. These chemical reactions inside our bodies are essential to, to maintaining life. Maintaining homeostasis is dependent on the body's ability to maintain the four biomolecules of life, which if you recall were carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. Recall that all of the biomolecules in our bodies have different roles or functions in life-sustaining reactions. So for example, carbohydrates were a source of energy, lipids made up cellular membranes, proteins regulated cellular processes, and so on and so forth. So how do we obtain biomolecules? Well, the simple answer is we eat food. So through digestion, we break down food into parts needed for biomolecules. Now, what are these parts that we need? Well, they are these subunits or monomers. Amino acids were the monomer of proteins. Fatty acids were the subunits of lipids. Monosaccharides or glucose are monomers of carbohydrates. And nucleotides are the monomers of nucleic acids. So once we have these subunits or monomers, our bodies can then use them as building blocks for our cell cellular processes. So overall, kind of as you look at this diagram and it looks complicated, just remember, the main idea is that metabolism is a balance between breaking things down and building them back up. There are two main types of metabolic reactions. Catabolism is the set of metabolic pathways that breaks down molecules into smaller units. Anabolism is the set of metabolic pathways that builds molecules from smaller units. Now the easy way I kind of remember this is whenever you see catabolism, think C, cut. Okay, so catabolism, again, is breaking things down. Now an example of metabolism is glucose regulation. So recall glucose is a monosaccharide, which was a building block of the polysaccharides, which were the polymer of carbohydrates. And carbohydrates, as we know, are a key source of energy in most organisms, all the way from bacteria to humans. Glucose regulation is very important in maintaining homeostasis in the body. So homeostasis, if you recall, is the state of steady internal physical and chemical conditions maintained by living systems. So your body has a feedback loop or a metabolic system to help maintain blood sugar levels. So I want you to kind of pause here and just examine this diagram for a moment. So here's the simple diagram of a feedback loop. You're going to watch a video that explains this in more detail momentarily, but the two signals or pathways to follow are the low blood sugar, the green prompts, and the high blood sugar, the red prompts. The stimulus of the sugar signals for a metabolic response in the body, and this response happens in order to maintain homeostasis. So you are going to watch this video, pause here, Go back to blend, watch the video, answer these three questions, and then come back whenever you're finished. Okay, we should now have these three questions answered in your notes. So, back to the main idea. Remember, metabolism is breaking things down and building them back up. And the two main types of metabolic reactions were catabolism and anabolism. So recall, through digestion, we broke down food into parts needed for bi biomolecules, and those parts were these subunits or monomers. Once we have these subunits or monomers, our bodies can then use them as building blocks for our cellular processes. But how do we break down polymers to monomers and vice versa? So you may recall this slide from last lesson, but most biomolecules are formed by a process called polymerization, in which large compounds are built by joining smaller ones together. And we broadly categorize polymerization into two categories, addition and condensation. Metabolic reactions within living organisms are dependent on many things, but we know water is, vital, is a vital component to these reactions. 
So the two types of polymerization reactions that you need to know are dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis. So now we're going to look at dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis in a little bit more detail. Dehydration synthesis is a chemical reaction that builds up molecules by losing water. So large biological molecules often assemble via dehydration synthesis reactions in which one monomer forms a covalent bond to another monomer, and that releases a water molecule in the process. You can remember what happens by the name of the reaction, dehydration, because we know that means loss of water, and synthesis we know means formation of something. So here is an example of a dehydration synthesis reaction and what you might see. Now an easy way to tell this is a dehydration synthesis reaction is because on the product side, remember the right side of the arrow, product side, left side of the arrow, reactant side, but on the product side you will have a larger molecule than what you initially started with. So here you have two individual glucose, okay, and then here on the right hand side you have a disaccharide maltose. Okay, another key is that you also have water on the product side, okay, because water was lost from the reactant side. So again, this is a standard form for a dehydration synthesis reaction. Next we have hydrolysis, and hydrolysis is a chemical reaction that breaks down molecules with the addition of water. Polymers are broken down into monomers via hydrolysis reactions in which a bond is broken or lysed by addition of a water molecule. You can remember what happens by the name of the reaction. So hydro, we know, means addition of water. And lysis, as we will learn more so in Unit 3, but lysis means breaking down. So here is a hydrolysis reaction. Now, key to this, if you see water on the reactant side, again, left side of the arrow, and a smaller molecule on the product side, this is hydrolysis. So again, on this one, you start with maltose, that disaccharide, you add water, and you end up with two smaller glucose molecules. So generally, dehydration synthesis reactions build molecules up and require energy, while hydrolysis reactions break molecules down and usually release energy. Overall, dehydration synthesis loses water and builds a molecule, while hydrolysis adds a water and breaks a molecule. And these two processes are essentially just opposites of each other. So here's a check for understanding. So look at each of the following three reactions and state if it is a hydrolysis or dehydration reaction uh, being shown. Okay, so let's review these three. Number one was hydrolysis, two, dehydration synthesis, and three was also dehydration synthesis. Now, how can we tell what's happening? So for number one, remember you have water on the left side and you ended up with two smaller products, right? So you lysed something, you broke it apart with the addition of water, again, on the left-hand side. Number two, dehydration synthesis. So you see water initially on the right product side and you're ending up with a larger molecule, okay, also on the product side. Okay, so water is lost and you are synthesizing or creating something bigger. Number three, so this one's a little bit more tricky because it doesn't have water on the reactants or the product side, but it does show water here moving out. Okay, then the second key is looking at the reactants on the left side and product on the right side, you notice the product is bigger. Okay, therefore, water was removed, product is bigger. This is dehydration synthesis. So the next couple slides are going to look pretty familiar from Unit 1, um, particularly from our photosynthesis lesson. So if you recall, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is the energy molecule of all life. Structurally, ATP is an RNA nucleotide. So unlike last time when we first spoke about ATP, this structure may have looked pretty unfamiliar. But now, go back into your 2.3 notes and compare ATP to the structure of a nucleotide. So ATP has that adenine group, ribose, five carbon sugar, and three phosphate groups. Any food or other source of energy that does include glucose 
a cell takes in is eventually converted to ATP. And ATP is the form the mechanisms of the cell can easily use. So from unit one, we know photosynthesis is powered by ATP. In addition to photosynthesis, ATP powers living organisms, metabolic pathways, and cellular processes. Now recall, ADP, adenosine diphosphate, has two phosphate groups instead of three. And the difference was the key in the way to which living things store energy. Here to the right is a really good diagram. We spoke about this in lesson 1.12. But ADP is like the rechargeable battery. It contains some energy, but it's not as much fully powered as ATP. ATP can easily release and store energy by breaking and reforming bonds between the second and third phosphate groups and that characteristic made it exceptionally useful as the basic energy source for all cells. So, how exactly are these bonds broken? Okay, specifically that bond between the second and third phosphate group. So the bonds are broken via hydrolysis. And remember, hydrolysis of the phosphate groups in ATP releases a lot of energy, or it is a highly exothermic reaction. So we're going to talk more about exothermic and endothermic reactions next class, but exothermic just means energy is released. So the energy released from the breaking of the molecular bond is the energy we use to keep ourselves alive. ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP in the following reaction here to the right. So water is added, as you see it going in here, to break off the third phosphate group. So you get energy released, you get a DP, and you get this little P with an I. And that PI is just inorganic phosphate, or it's just a free phosphate group. So like most chemical reactions, the hydrolysis of ATP to ADP is reversible. So the reverse reaction combines ADP and that inorganic phosphate, or phosphate group, to regenerate ATP from ADP. Since ATP releases energy, ATP synthesis requires an input of energy. So we have now reached our exit ticket. Go ahead, pause here, and try to answer these five questions on your own. So now go ahead and let's check ourselves. So what were the two main types of metabolic reactions? Those were catabolism and anabolism. Number two, why is it important to maintain homeostasis? Homeostasis helps maintain stable internal and external environments with optimal conditions for carrying out processes. It is a dynamic process that requires constant monitoring of all systems in the body to detect changes and mechanisms that react to those changes and restore stability, which essentially is just metabolism. Number three, the two main types of reactions that join monomers into polymers and break down polymers into monomers were dehydration th synthesis and hydrolysis. Number four, what type of molecule is ATP? So structurally, ATP is an RNA nucleotide and it has the three phosphates. At the center, it had the five carbon sugar ribose and then it was attached to the nitrogenous base adenine. And number five, how does ATP release energy? That was by hydrolysis of the phosphate groups. It is a highly exothermic reaction, and remember, this hydrolysis removes the third phosphate group, forming that from ATP into ADP. So that's the end of lesson 2.4. Thanks for watching. Go back, review your notes, make sure you're up to date on your vocabulary, and thank you for watching.